Hi, fourth graders. Welcome back. It's Miss Nichols again for another Making Meaning lesson. Uh, for those of you that have been with me before for lessons, you'll know that my classroom from my home does not have any students, but we do have a menagerie of lots of pets. We have three cats, a bunny rabbit, some fish. Another fun fact about me is that I was born and raised in a very small town in Sitka called Sitka, Alaska. And when I was probably about your age, you can see a picture there of uh, Sitka, and that is actually Swan Lake. Swan Lake freezes during the winter time. And that was the way that I made my way to school every day. I would throw on my, uh, my ice skates and take off across the lake to head to school. Of course, that was only in the winter time. There wasn't, wasn't snow and ice year round, but a little bit of interesting fact about me. My guess is you're getting pretty good at this by now. Some of the materials that you'll need are if you have a district packet, that would be great. Uh, if not, a piece of paper, something to write with will be great. And hopefully you've got your reading logs. Um, that could be from your student response book, maybe that you received from school that you've been working on all year. Or if you've been using the packets and you have the reading logs that have been included in the packet, hopefully you've had some time to catch those up and include all of the books that you've read this year in your IDR. You'll also need a turn and talk partner. We know that you've come up with some clever ways to have a turn and talk partner at home. Some of you have been maybe turning and talking with a family member, someone older in your family, or even maybe someone younger. You might have found that a friend on the phone following the same lesson is a great way to, to share your thinking. Maybe you're talking to a pet, pretending to have a conversation with someone, all of those are great ways. The most important thing is that you share your thinking out loud and that it's not just stuck in your head. We also want you to think about remembering to share in whatever language is most comfortable for you at home. In the last couple of weeks, you've been doing some really heavy thinking about books, thinking about the important ideas and from those important ideas, building summaries. A couple weeks back, you and I, we looked at the boy who harnessed the wind. We identified the important ideas from that story, and from those, we built a summary, a shortened, condensed version of that book that really just includes the most important ideas and not all of the details. And then last week with Miss Hafsala, you spent some time looking at a picture book of Rosa Parks. You also looked at a firsthand account by Rosa Parks herself about the same events that were included in that story. And you had a chance to think about how a firsthand account, someone telling their own story, versus someone, a secondhand account, someone else telling the story, how that is different and how the stories may feel and sound differently. For the next couple lessons, we're going to focus on really thinking about our IDR books. This year has been uh, so full of reading and now it's really time for us to be thinking about wrapping up some of what we've done this year and really focus on getting ourselves towards some summer reading. So for the next few lessons, we're going to focus on reflecting on the books that you have read this year. That's why those reading logs are going to be important to jog our memory about what books did we read this year. And then from that list, you're going to select ones that you especially liked. And maybe you think that others might want to know more about those books. From, those, from that list, you're going to write a summary of maybe your favorite book. And using those summaries, we're going to make recommendations for classmates for summer reading. Let's get started. Before we start to look at the IDR books in particular that we've read this year on our own, let's think about some of the read aloud texts 
that have been part of our lessons in our classrooms this year. You and your classmates and teachers may have read Animal Senses, a Hurricane. Maybe you spent some time thinking about and reading The Princess and the Pizza or The Bat Boy and His Violin. Some of you may have had a favorite in Chicken Sunday or My Man Blue. All of these are great examples of the read-alouds that we've had this year. Some were fiction, sh uh, shattering earthquakes. Some were narrative nonfiction, such as Rosa Parks. We've read fiction and nonfiction and poetry, and even some functional reading, such as how to do something. All have been great reading this year. As we think back on the books that you have read individually by yourself, or the books that you read with your class, let's think about what kinds of text have you enjoyed reading this year and why? So let's spend some time thinking to ourselves, what genre, what types of books have been your favorites this year and why is that so? Go ahead and turn and talk to your partner. So what were some of your thoughts? Some of you might have thought about sharing that you really liked nonfiction because it's a fun way to learn about a topic or a place or an event. Or maybe you shared that you really liked poetry because it's cool to have a short poem and yet have so much to think about in that short amount of writing. You may have talked about that you really liked fiction and digging into characters' thoughts and feelings and actions and how the setting impacts all of that. All of those are great reading choices. Okay, now's the time to look in the rear view mirror. That's to look back and really think about what are your independent books that you've read and really spend some time looking it over and we're going to decide what are some of our favorites. So you're going to want to have your reading log. Maybe it's the one that's from your student response book. Maybe it's the one that's from the packet that you've been using. And if you don't have either of those, go ahead and take out a sheet of paper and go ahead and brainstorm a little bit and think back to the books that you have read on your own this year. Go ahead and update those. We're going to spend a few minutes uh, making sure that the, it's as complete as possible. Have we captured all of the books that we have read? And then you're going to spend some time reviewing those and really thinking back which ones really caught your interest, which ones were the ones that were hard to put down, and then you're going to actually identify by putting a star next to maybe two or three texts that you are really just really loved and enjoyed this year, really some of your favorites. Okay, let's go ahead and start that. Hopefully you had enough time to do that work, but if not, go ahead and pause the video before continuing on to this part. Now we're going to do a think pair share. Um, hopefully there's someone else that you might be able to talk about what your favorite books were this year. Um, does not have to be a classmate. You might ask someone else in your home, what was your favorite book? So the question I want you to think about and share with whomever you have there is which of your favorite books do you think other students would most enjoy learning more about and why? So you're going to review your list, look at the ones that you starred, and you're going to explain to your partner why it is that you chose those books and why do you think others might want to learn more about those. Go ahead and pause and share. There are so many books that we could have read this year and likely we probably didn't read the same ones. But you may have shared with your partner that you really enjoyed reading nonfiction books 
maybe something such as Seven Wonders of the World, because it was really interesting to learn about other locations. You may have talked about uh, that you found an author that you really liked. Jason Reynolds is one of my favorite. Have you read any of his books yet? You may have also found a series that you really liked. Lots of folks like Diary of a Wimpy Kid. So those are some of the things. What did you say? Okay, now that you've had a chance to share a few of your favorites, it's time for us to decide which one is it gonna be that you're gonna work with to share with others and to think about the important ideas and building a summary. Which one is the one you're going to be working with? So now you're going to look over your reading log and go ahead and put a big star next to it or circle it. Whichever book you're going to focus on, let's do that now. Now that you've decided on your favorite book, we're gonna need some to spend some time reviewing it. It may have been one of the books that you read really early this year and you remember most of the parts but maybe you need to go back and refresh your memory and really think about it again over the next couple of days we're going to spend some time doing that so it's going to be important for you to somehow get a hold of that book now we realize that uh, the the libraries are closed and you can't be at school to get a, um, a book from the librarian like you normally would. But there are some ways that we can get a hold of some books, um, even if we're at home. So let's think about how can I review the book if I don't have it at my house? Let's take a look at some of our options. As we've been reminding you most of these lessons, there are some electronic or ebooks available through Seattle Public Schools, the main website for families and students. You can go to the SPS or Seattle Public Schools main website. You will select the student and family portal little section that's on the website, and then you will click on the academic tools, which will open up a number of different resources. Some of these places will have books that you may have read. Tumble Books, Kids Reads, Pebble Go, they all have places to search for a book title. Maybe your book is in there. Another resource that we now have, it's very exciting because this is new, is students from Seattle Public Schools have access to go to Seattle Public Library online, even if you don't have a library card. It's called Library Link, and this is something new that they've set up to help support students with reading at home. And you can look through and sign up through visiting the Seattle Public Library, spl.org, and accessing eBooks through their library link. That will give us access to resources such as Libby, which has lots of books for us to look at. To get signed up for the library link through Seattle Public Libraries, you're going to probably need some help from someone. Uh, it's not too hard to do, and there's a nice tutorial that shows you exactly how to set up your free account so that you can get access. So again, you're gonna visit Seattle Public Library, www.spl.org, and you're going to then walk through through the tutorial that they have online that shows you exactly how to sign up and how you can get access. Starting to, uh, in the next lesson, we're going to then really zone in on our IDR book and think about the important ideas and the one that we've chosen as one of our favorites this year. But before we can do that, you're going to need to do the following. You're going to want to locate your book online 
either through the Seattle Public Library or the Seattle Public Schools resources. If you have troubles finding the book, maybe you don't find it on either place, please ask your teacher for help in finding that. Then you're going to want to review the book. You're gonna skim and scan it. You don't have to read every single page, but you're going to want to skim and scan looking for the important ideas. If it's a chapter book, you might be thinking, oh, what were the most exciting or important sections? If you read a nonfiction book, what were some of the sections uh, that helped you to really think about what was happening in the book? You're gonna to wanna to refresh your memory. So we will need to do that before our next lesson. Okay, now it's time for independent daily reading or IDR. Remember, you're gonna to wanna to find a just right book. You know, it's June now. Have you thought about that recently? Your reading probably has grown a lot this year. Really make sure that you're reading a book that's just challenging enough and not too, not too easy and not too hard. Kind of like the Goldilocks rule, I always think. And then you're gonna to want to read for at least 30 minutes. Really set a timer and challenge yourself. How long can you read in one sitting? As you're reading, I want you to be thinking about the important parts of the book that you're reading, whichever text it is. Because afterwards, I would like for you to practice giving an oral summary. Oral means to speak or to talk. So you're going to share with someone at home uh, the summary of the book that you read today. You don't have to necessarily go all the way back to the beginning of the book, although you could if you would like to, but you could choose to summarize just the section that you read today. What were those important parts? You get to choose. Okay, let's get reading. As always, if you're running out of books, don't forget to look online, both at the Seattle Public Schools website that's listed here, but also think about going to the Seattle Public Library and getting set up there with an account so that you can read books online. You can read from your phone, you can read from a tablet or a computer. All of those are options for reading books online. Happy reading.